Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Potchefstroom campus of the Northwest University recently hosted a workshop to plan the creation of a network for nuclear education, science and technology in South Africa. Keith Campbell attended the workshop and joins me in studio to tell us more. Hi Keith. What is the purpose of the National Nuclear Network? Well, the underlying uh, reason was a realization that in South Africa, expertise on in the nuclear, civilian nuclear energy and research and development sector is spread quite widely, but in a number of uh, silos, basically, uh, with groups here and there uh, doing their own thing and not communicating with each other very well. And in some cases, uh, these pockets of expertise are very small indeed and on their own are not sustainable. And basically, the idea is to bring them all together and, and I think one has to say the pun is intended, create critical mass in the sector in South Africa. And what steps need to be taken to actually develop the network and who is going to be involved? Well, the most important step has already been taken. Uh, it was the workshop that uh, has been run uh, over several days in Potchefstroom uh, to bring people together to discuss uh, how it should be structured, how it should be organized, and who should be involved. The, the idea is that it should be uh, what the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, calls a nuclear education, science, and technology network. And it should include academia, all the universities that are involved in nuclear research uh, in one way or another, or in awarding degrees relevant to the nuclear sector. Uh, industry, uh, government departments, relevant government departments like environment, uh, like um, energy. Uh, Certain uh, parastatal organizations, the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation is an obvious uh, example. And of course, the only operator of nuclear power reactors in South Africa is ESCOM. And then of course, uh, the National Nuclear Regulator. So the idea is to get basically everyone that's involved in the nuclear sector, nuclear energy sector, nuclear research and development sector, nuclear education sector, bring them all together to form this network. And the IAEA supports the idea, and could you give us some examples of the benefits of uh, such networks and where they are currently successful? Well, yes, the IAEA most definitely does support this initiative. Uh, it's a uh, kind of initiative they support everywhere where a country is interested in developing its nuclear capabilities. Uh, there are a couple of points uh, with regard uh, to your question. There are national nuclear education, science and technology networks around the world, but there are also continental networks. There is uh, a European network, there is uh, an Asian network, there is a Latin American network, and since last year there has been an African network known as AFRANEST. Uh, NEST being the acronym for Nuclear Education Science Technology and AFRA being the uh, acronym for African Regional Agreement, African Regional Agreement of the IAEA. So the great advantage of such networks is that it brings all the relevant actors together in a country so they can interact and exchange ideas and exchange knowledge and work together. But it also means that they then can plug into these continental networks and exchange ideas and information and get outside help when they need it easily because they're established uh, communications networks. And these uh, continental networks interact with each other as well and through the IAEA itself in Vienna so that it is possible to tap expertise from other parts of the world. Now, regard to countries that have uh, such networks, one of the interesting things is that South Africa is, uh, as 
Anthony Sillier of Northwest University pointed out, actually one of the oldest nuclear technology countries in the world. But it's also one of the last of such countries to consider creating a, a nest network. Uh, most of the other established nuclear technology uh, countries already have such networks. I should caution that different countries use different terminologies, but they're the same kind of structure. Another thing is there is no standard model to create such networks. Each country uh, puts together its own network, uh, constant with its own needs and its own capabilities and its own traditions and its own structures. But they are equivalent networks in every country. You know, Japan has one, the United Kingdom has one, Belgium has one, Czech Republic. There are a number of ones in Europe that link several European countries together, or institutions in several European countries together. Uh, these are not the same as the European continental network. And then uh, you have other countries around the world and uh, more than one African country is considering this uh, program because there is growing interest in nuclear research in Africa and there always has been more nuclear research in Africa than most people realize as there are several countries in the continent that operate research reactors, although South Africa is currently the only African country to operate nuclear power generation reactors. Great, thanks Keith. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.